push one of those fun buttons. <laughs> you, you canceled the buttons? Nothing happened. You, you didn't hear that? Yeah, I heard it in mine. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear it in mine. Why didn't I hear it in mine? I don't have any idea. Did you really hear it in yours? Yeah, the first time, yeah. Welcome back to part two of this week's Yawa. Uh, if you missed part one, go back and watch it. We talked a lot about a lot of cool stuff. We talked a lot. We talked a lot. It's pretty much what we do. What we do want to say is, though, if this is your first time to the channel, definitely be hitting that subscribe button so that you don't do things like miss the first part of this week's Yawa. Yeah, don't be part of the 66% that don't subscribe. Yeah, why? Why 66%? We don't know. We don't know. But we're happy to help you all out, so let's get started with some questions. Rock and roll. From Rob Scott on Facebook. What's the best course of action for your new puppy's first week of life with you? Should you go crazy with introductions away from home or set it into your home routine first? Large Monster Lander pup, eight weeks old. Well, congratulations on the new large puppy. Monster Lander. Yes, they're so pretty. The last large Monster Lander that I trained, the name was, what was his name? That was a small. Sig. No, oh, no, large. No, no, no. Sig. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were going to say... One of the small Monster Landers. No, 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 no. Okay. Sig. I got to watch a large Monster Lander at one of the Navda tests that I was judging, and mm -hmm. it was a pretty awesome uh, little puppy. It was running the natural ability test. I think we were in South Dakota when I judged it. I judged a ton last year, so it kind of all like blends together. took a setter and smashed it into a wire hair. And got some crazy woolly coats. This dog had an insane coat. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, because you couldn't do it with a short hair. You'd end up with some short coats and some long coats, but you'd smash with the wire hair and you get coated all the way around. But maybe lots of I ability, don't think that's how it lots of drive, lots of personality. Okay, well, that's not how the large Monster Lander came about. <laughs> but if it did, little did you know, <laughs> Ethan is not a breed, uh, what are those called? Genial. Sommelier. <laughs> no. I can taste dog breeds with the best of them. Anyway, let's get to answering this question. So this is actually a great question because we just shot a video about this, uh, and I think it's coming out on Saturday-ish. Don't quote me on that, though, because our schedule kind of... Very soon. Coming very to soon. a YouTube channel. Probably within you. the week, but... Uh, we talked about the things that we recommend doing with your puppy when you bring them home um, and definitely getting them set into a routine. First, these are like key words. Um, Rock and roll. Would be our recommendation before just like bombarding them with everything. But that is also one of the things that you're going to want to work on um, almost from the beginning is continued socialization. Not overwhelmingly so where it's like, here, sink or swim, I'm throwing you to the wolves. But um, continued socialization and also developing behaviors that you're going to want in your puppy as an adult are all things that I would recommend starting with in that first week. I think it really comes down to the puppy. So if you are seeing boldness and confidence too, uh, then it's a sign that you're ready to continue to do more. You know, it's um, when you're bringing your puppy home, it's important to create the routine. What's the second thing? There's, there's three things. Create a routine, develop behaviors, have expectations and don't make excuses, and continued socialization. Yes. So the three things be checking for it because it's uh, going to come out soon. So if you're subscribed and you've got notifications turned on, you will know about this video. 100%. Now, the key to all of those things are going to be if your puppy comes home and maybe had a different kind of start at the breeders and they seem a little apprehensive, pitching them out into the socialization world isn't probably the greatest thing. Um, allow them to adjust a day or two and then start that. But uh, every dog's going to be a little different. So you do need to be able to read your dog. There's no magic thing there. But um, And I would just say, because Ethan mentioned, you know, you want to make sure that your puppy is comfortable and confident. The important thing to remember with that is don't coddle them if they are unsure or apprehensive. We don't want to mm -mm. reinforce that 
timid personality, that unsureness. We want to redirect their focus and then praise them and tell them what a good job they're doing when they are showing bold and confident traits. So, um, you know, if your puppy gets startled because, you know, you drop something in the kitchen or you bang a pan, you don't go, oh, 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 it's okay, puppy. It's okay. Because then they're like, oh, it's okay to be scared of this loud noise, or it's okay to be unsure with this situation. You just say, puppy, puppy, come on, let's go. And Make them yeah. forget that that happened. Treat Puppies them like a real short, dog and they'll become a real yeah, dog. Yeah, they have pretty short attention spans. So if we can redirect that focus pretty quickly, they're not even going to be focused on the fact that there was a loud noise a second ago. Um, and I wanted to touch on this because somebody else reached out to me on a, in a message about they're getting a six-week-old puppy. What do we think of that um, type of situation, getting them that young? And that was one of the things that I did mention to them as well. So if you're getting a six-week-old puppy – your puppy's not going to be in the same place in development as an eight-week-old puppy. No, not at all. There is a huge difference that we see between six and seven weeks and then seven and eight weeks. We talk about charging the clicker and using meals for training sessions. And although those things are important, at six weeks, we're going to be more interested on making sure that they get enough food in the day. And because um, Well, just for example, um, our Breezy Walker litter right now, they're going to be six weeks old this week. And uh, they're just transitioning to hard kibble. So yeah. if I was like, yeah, get your six-week-old puppy home and start clicker training with their meal, well, these guys, you know, wouldn't be quite ready for that. Your eight-week-old puppy, though, is going to be on kibble for the last should two be. weeks yeah, with us, be. and they're going to be ready to just start that clicker training process. Um, in a perfect world, I would say that we would probably send our puppies home between seven and eight weeks. Yeah. Not earlier than seven weeks, though, definitely. No earlier than seven, no, but... But um, our state law requires eight weeks. So that's also something that I mentioned that he look into. Um, yeah, and most of them do. I think um, I think Wisconsin says seven weeks. I don't know. All I said was look into that and just, you know, take things slow and continue building that confidence I, and they either, socialize the They're puppy. either not going to have a state law or the state law is going to be something beyond six weeks. I Typically, know that Typically, yes. Sure. So, so. Um, that also depends. And I would say that the breed of your puppy also will play a big role in, you know, their readiness for new things. Um, some puppies and breeds are a little slower to mature and just have a different personality, you know, for the most part. We're talking about short hairs and they're bold and confident and mm -hmm. ready Whereas we worked with a little Brock Francais at our puppy training seminar. She was 10 weeks old? 12. 12 weeks Cause old. Because she was older than she Thunder. She was tiny, tiny. And she was, she was littler than Thunder. Um, her eating habits were slower. So we had to make adjustments for everything. We, you know, Thunder's like scarfing down my hand trying to get the handful of food. He's yeah. a little food motivated. And she was like, nibble, nibble, nibble. So again, we had to make some adjustments. So it depends on your breed as well yeah. and, and what they're ready for. Mm -hmm. So like... Like Ethan said, just read your dog. <laughs> okay, next question from... Sometimes I have a good idea. Yeah, I'll give you that. Next question from one of our top fans on Facebook. I think that's kind of cool how Facebook tells you who some of your top fans are. Uh, from Eric Doan. Can't wait to see how Thunder continues to develop. How did you choose him from the litter? So... I thought this was a really good question to answer since we were just talking about development with puppies and thunder. Um, so also, I don't know if you know, but we've been doing some, on, because you're on Facebook, so I wanted to mention, we've been doing some IGTV live popping in with some thunder development stuff on IGTV. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow us to do both platforms. Um, so we're going to try and do a couple of those on Facebook every once in a while too, because we... Saw that they do also have a live, go live option. So, so that our Facebook fans don't miss out either. But we've been doing some of those. Hey, we've got a few extra minutes this afternoon or in the evening. Evenings is usually when we have a little more time because Aiden, our little, little boy is down for the count usually by then. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can do an evening training session with Thunder, talk about something like, was it the last video that we were talking about the older dog and puppy interactions and trying to go live with stuff like that just to show how we expect our dogs to interact so that people get to see, you know, real life. Absolutely. But so your question was, how did we choose him out of the litter? So uh, the Muddy Benny litter was definitely a litter that we were really interested in keeping a puppy out of, but we were very open to a male or a female. We just 
really didn't know what we wanted until I think we finally made that decision at around six and a half, seven weeks, honestly, where we're like, this is the puppy we were you know, evaluating all of the things that we saw in all of the puppies, um, their personalities, their drive, their just, wow, look at me factor, um, and personality. And we also know that one of our males, Vex, is getting older, and it usually takes a couple of years to develop a new stud dog Mm -hmm. if they make the cut. So we thought, well, we Probably should start sooner rather than later because um, Vex is five. And if it takes us a couple years to develop Thunder and he works out, you know, Vex is going to be around that seven mark before he's doing any breedings. And that's if he works out. And there's a whole gamut of things that we're going to evaluate through his development to see if he makes the cut even, which is part of having... between. Trainability and natural ability and health genetic, clearances, yeah, health clearances, you know, yeah. testing their hips and things like that. So it's not just, oh, we kept a puppy. He's a done deal part of the program. I sure as heck hope he is. Uh, but we also can't be blind to things that are going to affect our breeding program. Great question. So next question by another one of our top fans and also one of our patrons. So I wanted to pop that up there. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Hello. From James Schick, is there such a thing as a typical day? What things do you try to reinforce in the off-season daily routine? So great question. Um, I guess for most people, the summer is during the off-season. And so some things that we like to do is our roading with the dogs, but we have to make sure that it's still cool enough in the morning. And sometimes for us where we're at, even in the hottest part of the summer, it doesn't get down below 70 something overnight. So you want to make sure that it still is cool enough for your dogs to start that right away in the morning. Um, as well as that asphalt can be really warm, um, depending on where you're running or blacktop. Somebody asked me about running their dogs on blacktop, um, and that would get really hot really easily. We actually had somebody reach out to us recently with a situation with a sore pad and their dog was pulling them rollerblading, um, miles and miles and miles on blacktop. So I said, it's probably from heat and overuse and pulling. So you want to watch for things like that, because not only are we conditioning them to be in really good shape through roading, but we're conditioning their and toughening their pads to be able to hold up to tough terrain during the hunting season. What would that be called? It's like a blister. Jor- jorging, like so, ro- roller jorging, roll jorging. I don't know. Producer, <laughs> Google that <laughs> for us, real quick. There, um, so that's one thing that we do. We also typically with older dogs, um, that have hit that around a year mark that have had a season of birds, maybe depending on, um, when they hit that year mark, we'll also be looking at starting potentially a trained retrieve, which is a great thing to do during the summer and the off season because you get to do it in the air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. So you can get all your field work and all of your other things done early and then all of your indoor obedience and your trained retrieves and things like that, formal retrieving work uh, done in the afternoons when it's warming up. So we do a lot of retrieving work in the summer and the off season, um, continuing working on obedience all the time. That's something that can never be overdone because like you said, the off season, not everybody has the opportunity to hunt all year round, unless you're traveling like a crazy person from this country to that country, to this area, to that area, to be able to hunt all year round. Uh, so most dogs have an off season and it can be a pretty long time that they need to be able to be a good well-rounded part of the family in the house. I, I would say that most people would agree with the fact that <clears throat> their dogs are family companions 365 days a year and get to hunt during approximately, I don't know, 10 to 30 of them, depending on the family. Um, and 30 being on the probably pretty high end of that. For sure. So definitely... Obedience. You can always do more obedience from healing to place training to um, sit what, stays. Things that I wouldn't recommend during the off season would be um, getting launchers and setting up training drills or trying to do 
bird work based things. And the reason for that, they would be fine as long as they're not crappy situations. So you definitely don't need to be going way backwards in training because a lot of people that pick dogs up from our program say, now um, what do I do? Now what do I do? Do I need to get launchers? Do I need to continue to work on this? No, your dog's already hunting and ready for this. So we need to stay on that tier and continue to move forward. Um, so if you can find quality birds, which you have to be borderline a magician to find quality birds between the months of about May and August, which color me magic. Ethan's um, a magician. But we, you know, those birds are primarily bred and raised for dog trainers and get eaten up by those. So there's not a lot extra dog to go trainers around. and typically like hunt tests and trials use up yes. a lot of those birds too during the Sorry, summer. Do- dog training related though for test yeah. trials and trainers. But, um, Aside from that. Yeah. So if your dog is already trained to be ready for hunting season or they've already had a season of birds, you don't need to go back to doing. Our personal dogs may realistically see half a dozen times between the start of between the end of hunting season and then the start of hunting season again, unless they're prepping for a test. They may only see birds a half dozen times. And a lot of times that'll be some of the resident uh, quail or something or an extra training bird that gets left out in the field from whatever. We do a free run and they run into it and it's like, all right, handle it. Well, let's work it. Yep, Let's work it. But we're not typically going out and setting extra birds for our personal dogs. Unless, like Ethan said, we're prepping for some Mm -hmm. higher level of testing at that point. Most of the birds that you can get from somebody, we refer to as stupid birds. And stupid birds create stupid dogs. Um, you need good birds to create good dogs, and those would be... Wild. Wild and or quality birds at a release farm, something like that. Now, um, there are places out there, and I'm sure there are lots of them, but um, there are some places out there that kind of do the game preserve aspect of things, right? Uh, one of which, if you are in Iowa or the southeast or within a short drive of the southeast part, I would go to Highland um, Hideaway. Yep. Uh, they Those guys over there do a really, really good job of they dump the birds out and you go hunt them. And it's, well, where would we find birds here? Well, there might be a couple in this food plot. Oh, they're going to be down here along the edge of the draw and the thicker cover because they act more like as they act as wild as released birds really can. And right. There's a, even towards the end of the season, their birds are really good still because we've gone out there for, we go out there pretty much every year, except this last year with, you know, COVID we go out there and do their cabin fever hunt, which is yep. basically the last weekend of the preserve season. And we get an opportunity to do kind of a fun competition hunt with a team. There's an occasional stupid bird, but there's also birds that we track for 150, 200 yards that blow out 30, 40, 50 yards ahead of us. You know, Yeah. I mean, or that, you know, sometimes it's been snowing. So we get a different look at the, what those birds look like. So, um, but that's at the end of the season. Usually you're not expecting really great birds at that point. And they've been really, really so good. So find a good preserve or, or something like that if you're wanting to get a little bird work in. And then also I would just mention too, um, you can use a treadmill for conditioning. If it's mm-hmm. getting too hot out to do roading and other things like that, it's a very controlled way in the air conditioning, like I said, to keep your dog in shape. Um, and then doing some swimming is also great conditioning, but keep in mind that that water temperature also gets pretty warm. It's not just, oh, well, we're in the water, so it's going to be great. No, that water can I would warm- say that's probably the biggest conditioning misconception that people have. Yes, because that water gets warmed up. And if it feels like bath water, that dog's not going to be able to cool off. And then they're down in that water and they're not getting the opportunity for the wind to do any evaporative cooling so that they can even overheat in water. So you want to make sure that you watch for that. If you're in a bigger body of water. 70 degrees is 70 degrees. Except 70 degrees in the water, then you're also not getting that, you know, air movement as well for your dog. Mm -hmm. So. Those are some really good things that you can do off season, daily routine conditioning, um, not only physical conditioning, but, you know, keeping them sharp mentally, doing more challenging training with them from formal retrieving work to more expectations with obedience. So 100%. And then this question segues right from what Ethan was talking about. So we're going to hit on that and then we'll call it good for part two from, and I love the Instagram handle pheasant breath. Pheasant breath? Yeah, you can, 
he's going to check me. Hmm. Picking up our trained dog in August, he'll be 10 months old, planning to hunt him on preserved birds first, and then after we have more experience with him, we'll start to go after wild birds on public land. Any issues or things to watch out for with that approach? So first of all, that kind of segues with, you know, the off season, your dog's going to have had training um, to be a hunting dog, to be ready for hunting season. And most people's hunting seasons don't typically start as early as August. So maybe September, you'd get into some actual hunts or October. Um, you don't need to do that for your dog, but doing it for yourself to start feeling more comfortable handling them and in a controlled situation with just you and your dog, instead of going out with a hunting party or something like that is not a bad idea, especially if you get a you know, go to a preserve that's got quality birds, yep. like Ethan mentioned in the last um, little question answer. So quality birds, but it's a really good idea to go out maybe a couple times for you to feel comfortable handling your dog. Because I know when people pick up their dogs from us, we take time to show them everything that there's dogs learned in the field. We have them handle them in the field, have them handle them in the um, obedience stuff in the yard and in the kennel. Uh, but people get overwhelmed. Sure. It's a lot of information to take in. Yeah. People spend usually a couple hours, two hours, and that's, you know, a lot to take in, especially if it's stuff that you're not super familiar with and you're trying to remember all the cues and all the things and when to push the button, when not to push the button. So having a couple opportunities where the pros aren't looking over your shoulder, where you're feeling nervous as well, gives you an opportunity to work through a couple things, come back to your trainers with a couple questions. If you run into something in the field and be like, ah, how did they say to do this? Then you can reach out to them and then feel more comfortable before hunting season even starts. Absolutely. So really great question. Great questions this week. Uh, thank you guys all for asking them. And we will be back with you after we take a short break and get some more coffee. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.